Well, let's go to more now on one of our other top stories and the impeachment of the US President Donald Trump. Let's just remind you of how that process works. The House will now agree on who will be the House managers or the prosecutors of that trial in the Senate. And then that trial will be overseen by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and senators will act as jurors. At least two thirds or 67 senators need to vote guilty on at least one article of impeachment in order to have Donald Trump removed from office. And if this happens, the vice president becomes president. But that's unlikely since the Senate is controlled by Trump's Republican Party. Well, Richard Pilds is from the Sudler family. He's sorry, he is the Sudler family professor of constitutional law at New York University School of Law, and he joins us now from New York. Richard, th talk us through the rules here, because by my understanding, Nancy Pelosi doesn't actually need to send the articles of impeachment to the Senate. She could sit on them indefinitely. So, what are the actual rules? Yes, so this is a very interesting development. Um, there are rules that each part of the Congress sets for itself. The House has its rules, the Senate has its rules, and they can set whatever rules they want. The Constitution doesn't say anything about that. Um, typically, in impeachment, although we've had very few, but when the House impeaches, it immediately sends over the articles of impeachment to the Senate, which then begins the trial process. But here, what's going on is that Democrats want the Senate to call certain witnesses to mm. testify at the trial. And the Senate Republican leader does not want to call witnesses. So Nancy Pelosi is trying to exercise some leverage over that process by saying, I'm not going to send you the articles of impeachment until I'm convinced you are prepared to hold a fair trial which in her view means calling certain key witnesses, uh, many of whom are top level advisors to the president who Indeed. have firsthand knowledge of these issues. I understand that Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer are supposed to sit down and try to hash out some of these rules within the coming week. How long could Pelosi potentially hold out here? Well, we are in, in uncharted territory. Uh, so there's no precedent for this. There are no rules uh, here. Uh, so I think in theory she could hold out as long as she feels it's necessary uh, to try to get the Senate to agree on ground rules that the Democrats are willing to endorse. Now, there will be political calculations, of course, and um, you know how that constrains uh, when she sends the articles over. Uh, it's impossible to say at the moment, but she has control of the of the process and the timing for the moment. Well, Mitch McConnell has said that he's going to work in coordination with the White House in order to try to protect the president. Is this how a Senate trial is actually meant to work? Is this what the founding fathers had in mind? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and the reason is that when our Constitution was written, uh, we did not have political parties. The framers of the Constitution didn't really anticipate the rise of political parties. Uh, and so they thought that the House and the Senate would stand sort of independent of the president. Um, and what's happened over time is that with the rise of political parties, the members of the president's party in the House or the Senate have a, a shared fate with the president. Uh, their election prospects are very much tied to how the president of their own party is perceived to be doing. Uh, and so you get these alliances between the president and the members of the House or the Senate from his own party. Um, and that just simply was not anticipated mm. uh, by the framers. And it has all sorts of implications for how our system functions uh, very far beyond the impeachment context. Indeed, in an era of very bitter, bitter partisanship that we're seeing. Richard Pilds, the Sudler Professor of Constitutional Law at New York University, thank you for joining us on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much.